Hello guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 10 of tutorial series on Amazon API Gateway tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we have gone through on how to return binary data from Lambda function to the API Gateway and from API Gateway to the end client. And now in this tutorial, I'm going to cover the same uh, but using Lambda prox integration method. So let's get started. So what I will do first is I'm going to delete this resource and then uh, we will recreate the resource so that uh, everything uh, sounds to be happening from scratch so now the resource has been deleted so let's click on actions and say create resource so i'll say bucket and i will define bucket as the path parameter and say create resource now within this resource, we are going to create a method saying create method that is get method and then click on this tick mark. Now here it's asking us to integrate the Lambda function. So as I said, uh, we are going to use Lambda proxy integration. So we are going to check this and then the Lambda function that is access file S3 API and say save. Okay. Now once the resource has been created, uh, we are going to configure few things over here. Now as you can see integration response is disabled and within integration request there is no option for mapping template or any other option that we were able to see in the previous tutorial, right? So uh, the beauty of proxy integration is that we don't have to configure a custom status code, uh, different headers or encoding, right? So that is something we can directly handle from the Lambda function itself, right? So first we will define a URL query string parameters. So navigate to method request, set request validator as validate query string parameters and headers, and then click on the stick mark. Path parameter we had already configured. So click on URL string parameters. Here we will define file. and say okay check as required and then one more thing we have to configure here is that uh, we have to tell api gateway to convert base 64 encoding into binary data right so for that in the legacy method we were able to convert the response to binary from integration response but uh, while we are using proxy integration we have to click on settings from the left panel and scroll down to binary media type here say add binary media type and here we will add a wildcard so asterisk slash asterisk and save this right and i think we are all done uh, in terms of changes from the api endpoint perspective or api gateway perspective right so now uh, we will jump to the Lambda management console or the Lambda function uh, that we had integrated with that API endpoint or method. So uh, this is uh, the Lambda function that we had used in the previous tutorial. So what we are going to do is we are going to modify this Lambda function. So I will remove uh, line number seven. So if you remember then we had mentioned few comments saying for legacy method and for proxy method, right? So right now we are dealing with the proxy method. So I'm going to comment line number nine and line number 10, right? We will require line number 11 and line number 12 for fetching or reading the content from the S3 bucket, right? And I will remove line 14 and 15. And I will uncomment line number 15 and 16 since it is for proxy method. So I will cut it from here paste it on line number seven right it's because uh, first we will fetch the bucket name and file name and then we are using bucket name and file name on line number 14 right so that's the reason i had uh, pasted it above and then i can remove this line number 19 to line number 24 So now in the uh, proxy integration method, we cannot directly pass the response as we are passing on line number 18, right? So as I said, uh, we have to handle status code, headers, content type, 
I mean, uh, it's the part of the headers and then body. And then uh, we have to define one more key value pair saying is base64 encoded. So we have to tell the API gateway that the response that we are sending from Lambda function is encoded or not, right? So let's see how it looks. So comment this line number 18 and define return a dictionary followed by status code. Oops. Status code colon 200 comma headers colon dictionary followed by content type that is application slash PDF. Then you can define multiple headers if you want, but right now I require only one. Followed by body should be in double quotes body colon so I will copy and paste this that is base 64 dot b64 encode of file content comma and then uh, we have to pass the key value pair saying is base 64 encoded so it's true in our case right because uh, we are passing the encoded response and then we are going to save this and i think we are all done so we will redeploy or not redeploy we will deploy this api so click on actions say deploy api select the deployment stage and say deploy now let's jump back to postman and try to invoke this endpoint so i have that uh, endpoint url followed by the bucket name as a path parameter over here and then it is followed by the query string parameter that is file equal to content one dot pdf so let's have a look at the s3 bucket once so ideally we are fetching this file that is content one dot pdf from this s3 bucket and that is something we are passing as path parameter and query string parameter so let's go back to postman and say send So we are going to save this response and let's go ahead and have a look. So as you can see, we were successfully able to fetch the PDF file in the form of binary data from the S3 bucket using API gateway and Lambda function, right? So before that, uh, one more thing I want to cover is that let's jump back to API gateway and click on settings, right? So here within binary media types, we had mentioned a wildcard saying, uh, consider all the headers as binary media type, right? So what if uh, we want to return JSON response, right? So while we define a wildcard over here like this, it respect the is base 64 encoded parameter. So now if I want to return JSON response instead of PDF, right? So what I can do is I can define it as false and I can define content type as JSON and instead of uh, base64 encoded content I can say JSON dot dumps hello right and say save this function so now if I keep this is base64 encoded true so let's keep it as true right and check it so now let's go back to postman and say send now it will throw an error. So it says internal server error because it's expecting base64 uh, encoded data and now it's trying to convert it back to binary data, right? So that's the reason it failed, right? Because we are not passing base64 encoded data, right? So that's the reason it's throwing internal server error. So uh, we have to change this is base64 encoded to false and save this. Now it should not throw an error. So let's see. 
So as you can see, uh, the invocation was successful and we had the response, right? So uh, you can also mention individual uh, content type uh, within settings, right? But uh, I will recommend that uh, define it as wildcard and it will respect the ease base 64 encoded uh, parameter uh, within the response, right? So that you don't have to manually come and add a certain uh, content type or accept headers. So mark it as wildcard return this parameter saying is base 64 encoded if it is true or false so the another way around is to not pass is base 64 encoded parameter right so if i uh, go ahead and uh, remove this parameter and save this function then uh, it's not going to convert this response uh, into binary and it's not going to consider this response as base 64 encoded until and unless uh, I'm not passing is base 64 encoded parameter, right? So let's uh, go ahead to Postman and test it. So I will say send. So as you can see, uh, the invocation was successful, right? So you can pass is base 64 encoded parameter when you are uh, trying to pass on the uh, binary data. So well, uh, that's it for this tutorial. So now what if the end client want to access a file and the size of that file is over 100 MB or more than that, or maybe in GBs, right? So in that case, the method of returning binary data is not feasible or in fact, I believe it will not work, right? So in that case, uh, what we can do is instead of returning binary data, we can return pre-signed URL, which will give temporary access to the user so that he can use that URL to download the file and within the set period of time that URL will expire, right? So well, that is something I will cover in the next tutorial. And till that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.